Hi everyone, welcome to part 1 of our live look setup video. In part 1 we'll be mainly looking at the upper half of the live look setup window and in part 2 we'll be talking about setting up the color management and creating channels in the lower half of the setup window. So let's start right away by setting up a new live looks project and call this um, Firefly season two because that's long overdue. Next we can select an output folder and in this folder live looks will save everything we will be creating during this project. Be it lookup tables, CDL, snapshots, QuickTime recordings, anything goes into this folder. Next we can define an output file prefix. Let me set this to FS2 for Firefly season two. Now this output file prefix will be added to each and every file name of any file that LiveLooks creates for this project, be it lookup tables, CDL, snapshots or QuickTime recordings, which helps identifying all the files created and tie them to this production. The project resolution and frame rate can be set here and also our working space. Now, as I said, in part two, we'll be taking a look at color management in detail, but just to break it down real quick, you can select here whether your grades should be based on the native color space of each camera connected to the system or whether you want your grades to be based on ACES or any other color space. Let's stick with native for now. Next, in this drop down, we can choose our color mode, whether we want to work LUT based or with a restricted tool set for CDL only. More on that in a later video when we're looking at the grading tools. Lastly, this drop down allows us to select how we want to store our grades. If we select scene and take, all of our grades will be stored based on the dialed in scene and take for each camera. This also means that there can only be one grade per take per scene per camera. If we change the grade and save it again for the same take, the old grade will get overwritten. Not so if we choose scene take and version, which allows multiple versions of a grade for any given take per scene and camera. If we don't want to be bothered with dialing in scene and take, then we can also save our grades based on timecode only for each camera. Next, let's take a look at the monitors tab. The monitors tab lists all the displays connected to our system. In this case, I'm using an AJA IO 4K with my MacBook Pro. However, LifeLook supports all the devices from AJA, including the Kona cards, and also everything from Bluefish 444 and Blackmagic. Before taking a closer look at this list, let's see what's behind the Configure SDI button. In here, we can select our device. LifeLook lets you work with multiple devices and even different devices from different hardware vendors. You can enable any given device here, set your output format here, and most importantly, you can define your SDI channels down here. Now the IO4K gives me four channels, of which I have set the first two to be my inputs and the channels three and four to be my outputs. If I close this dialog, you can see channels three and four show up as my outputs here. Now for every output in here, you can define a role. I can choose whether this monitor should show always the active camera, the camera that I'm currently working on, or a video wall made up of all the cameras connected to the system or a custom channel. More on that in part two of our video. Furthermore, I can configure all my monitors to convert the incoming signal to a certain color space. If it is set to source, no conversion will happen. Right now, my interface monitor is set to always show Rec. 709 with a gamma of 2.4. Alternatively, I can load a display LUT for each and every monitor. Next, LUT boxes. LifeLook supports the Teradek Color, the IS Mini from TV Logic, and also the Box IO and DM monitor series from Flanders Scientific. If we want to add them, just enable them here. Possibly hit rescan once. 
and our box IO needs to be added manually. Let me quickly do that by typing in its IP address like so and hit the add box IO button. So now I have three LUT boxes here and same as the monitors, I can define a color space and EOTF for each LUT box. More on that in part two. Metadata tab. In here, we can set up general production metadata like the production company, the names of the producers, the director, DOP, DIT, and even set our own company logo. All of what we're setting up here in this tab will show up on the reports exported from LifeLux. A report looks like this. This is a great report. Here's our company logo. Here's all the production information. And what follows is an overview of all the grades created and then the before and after snapshots including metadata, color space environment, generated files, etc. for each and every take. Next, record tab. In here we can first choose whether we want to enable recording or not. We can select the format that we wish to record to and also we can set a limiter which stops the recording automatically after any given time. In this case, 10 seconds. And coming to the very last tab here, we can set up generic settings like the UI language or how the video wall should look like, which grading panel we want to use and also which flavor our LUTs that we are storing should have. That's it for part one of our LifeLock setup video. Next up, part two, where we create channels and talk about color management. See you there.